Welcome to Riot Startup Spotlight, where we shine a light on the visionaries and disruptors who are shaping the future. I'm Jen Morgan, and today we bring you an exclusive interview with Ayush Garg, founder of Answer This, and Ryan McCarroll, the chief marketing executive of Answer This. Hello. Welcome. Can you all tell us a little bit about your company? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Answer This essentially is built with the goal of making the life of researchers easier. And the way that we do it is by slashing off the time it takes to create literature reviews. Just to provide a little bit of background on why the problem exists and what is the actual problem. When um, a researcher is undergoing their PhD, they spend about two years reviewing all of the previous literature on the topic that they're researching. This process is repetitive. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of mental energy. And it's time taken away from real experiments in science. Um, I saw my mother do this constantly um, when, when I was growing up. And, and, you know, the thought occurred to me, can this be automated? Um, and the, the answer is, yes, it can be automated with the technology that we have around us. And so our goal then became, how can we utilize the existing um, technologies that we have and leverage that? to essentially slash the time it takes researchers to craft and, and create their literature reviews. And now we have a database of over 200 million research papers, and we're able to distill that into a comprehensive literature review for essentially any topic with line by line citations. That's so cool. So what kind of previous experience um, influenced your role today? Like, what's your background? How did you get here? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for asking that question. So um, when first of all, when I was growing up, obviously both of my parents were scientists, so they had a huge influence on just the space I was around. You know, they were completing their PhDs um, as I was growing up, so I definitely saw a lot of the research process there firsthand. Um, got very passionate about it, and then about when I was sixteen, um, I was just moving to Singapore, and I actually connected with a professor from the University of Cambridge. He's a reader and emeritus now. A Dr. Peter Murray Rust, who is really passionate about the entire space of making science better. Um, he really resonated on this topic of, well, how do we use technology to help science? So we built tools in that space, notably PyGate papers and doc analysis. They got published um, and, and so on and so forth. But we were able to garner a huge community of researchers there who utilized it in their daily workflow. Um, I think that was the main sort of, you know, experience that uh, that sort of got me ready and passionate about Answer This. So I'd already been doing work in the research space, in the specific niche of research tools. And then when Answer This idea came about, um, everything just sort of lined up together to to create this. Yeah. And um, for myself, I've always been someone who admires marketing. I think marketing is a very innovative space where there's not a one size fits all. And so I've always had a passion for trying to experiment with different marketing tactics and learn from the mentors around me. When I was 16, I had an absolute blessing to be connected with a man called Alex Kamara. He took me through his entrepreneurship journey through getting account managers for uh, big Instagram accounts with over 200K followers and sort of bringing me on to the sales team and, and having me lead uh, the sales efforts for them. So that's where I got most of my marketing and sales experience. Uh, com coming out of that and coming to the University of Richmond and meeting Ayush, I've re I had previously uh, looked through a lot of research and see seen the problems that researchers have had to deal with. We talked to over 80 researchers and the amount of time, the amount of searching that it takes for researchers, especially in biology, to find quality reviews and, and to be able to make actual impact into their fields is ridiculously long and so I haven't quite had the personal experience that I use has but just hearing people's stories hearing what they've went through has personally impacted me and has really led me to push the sales efforts for answer this and and really try and make an impact and, and innovate the space. Thank you. What inspired you both to start this company? How did you get to this idea? Yeah, so essentially it was a combination of factors. Obviously, um, I had already had a lot of experience with research tools, sort of talked to a lot of researchers who were working in this space. So I was sort of familiar with, you know, what are the efforts that are being led? Now, as we all know, ChatGPT came about, right? And, and entire industries got disrupted 
one of the places where a lot of people were talking about it was the research space because everyone knows it's an open problem that research takes a lot of time and anything that can solve that is a viable solution. So people were exploring, is ChatGPT a viable solution for us? Um, two months in to launch, everyone figures out that no, ChatGPT is not. It can rewrite your abstract perhaps right it can and can in, improve its quality but as far as researching itself goes and one of the main things is finding the right documents chat gpt is unfortunately very bad at doing that mainly because of the hallucinations it has it gives references that don't don't exist doesn't have up to date you know access to knowledge all these different sort of things that was the big push that we really needed to produce something we could already see so much demand for a tool that could do that um, the lack of presence of such a tool. Um, so this and that, along with my previous experience in making research tools sort of positioned us in a way that we at least had to experiment, right? Like we saw an opportunity in front of us. We at least had to experiment. Um, so we started experimenting. We experimented for a lot of months just on the technological viability of is something like this possible? And then through our experiments and extensive research, we, we happen to land on an algorithm that's able to really take texts and go back to their paragraph citations. Um, it was a novel, disc novel piece of uh, information we discovered. And from that point on, I think the, the groundwork for Answer This was set up very well, in which we had researchers talking to us because obviously they want this problem solved. We had technology that could support us. And we had ourselves who were passionate about this field um, in itself. So I think the marrying of all those three different aspects sort of led on to this to be what it is today. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, I think that that's, I mean, really a great inspiration and in how, how you got, just got to where you are. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered so far as a startup and how have you overcome them? Yeah, I'll let Ryan talk about some of the recent challenges. I mean, we face challenges every day, but uh, yeah, I think um, I'll, I'll let him take this one. Yeah, I mean, being two international students uh, in the US already, you can imagine the amount of challenges that comes with that. Um, just going out of legal and going out of all the logistics and setup, which I'm sure Ayush could give a very in-depth explanation of all the problems that came out of that and the headache from there. Um, in terms of just the app itself, getting it out to the market, um, there's been a few challenges and I'll start off with the marketing challenges that I've experienced. So one, my previous experiences in marketing and sales is not directly correlated to marketing towards researchers. Researchers are found in places like research gain, they're found in LinkedIn groups, they're found in Facebook groups, which I've previously and I'll put my hands up, have limited experience with. And so learning an entire new field of marketing, learning how you should copyright um, to, to these group of people and, and sort of getting into their heads was definitely a big challenge for me. Uh, to get through this, we interviewed over a hundred more researchers. Um, for me, this really helped sort of get into the mind space of what, what they think through every single step of the research process. And what are the challenges and issues that they're facing for each researcher is really unique. I'm trying to see trends of what are the common issues that people are facing and what are the unique issues that people are facing. Really uh, drove, drove my uh, marketing copywriting for posts, marketing copywriting for the way I speak uh, to these researchers and just my outreach in general. In fact, Recently, we've made a change where I'm trying to mix my previous sales experience with our marketing approach. So I'm contacting uh, professors, PhD students, scientists, and uh, introducing answer this in a way that shows that they have a problem, we have a solution, and they might as well give it a go and see how they think. And from there, there tends to be a lot of people sharing and referrals uh, going with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and to sort of, you know, talk about the challenge space um, related to this. Obviously, marketing has been a big area where Ryan has had to deal with a lot of challenges, even myself sort of figuring out, you know, getting into the headspace of researchers. But talking about how we solve challenges and sort of how we approach challenges, because, you know, through this process, whether it is us being international founders, it's marketing, it's payment providers, it's technological challenges, HR, hiring, all these sort of things. Um, Challenges are going to be every day. 
the biggest thing is how you solve them. And for us, it's marrying sort of data analytics with emotion. We don't necessarily discard one over the other. The, the best way that we go about solving real issues that approach us is first of all, look at what the real data says. And that's where our qualitative and quantitative minds work very well. Um, in which I sort of am more of the data guy and, and you know, talk to researchers, form data points and, okay, these many researchers said these things and this is what the data is showing us. This is the practical implication or every single change we make. These are the A-B tests that we conduct. And Ryan comes in with more of an emotional approach where he knows what the researchers are saying. He's talked to them. He's been in their communities. And so if we marry both of those two things together, to come to decisions. And so all of the decisions that we make to counter challenges are done in a very methodological way, but not necessarily neglecting emotions. And this has led us to basically just view challenges as a normal up and down of business. We expect challenges, we countered them, and we're able to overcome them very, very easily. Yeah. And, and I'll just quickly add, you know, there's all these challenges and every, every sort of faces challenges, right? But I think the advantage that me and I use have is the fact that we're really quick with these things. I each analyze this data like I've never seen anyone analyze data before. And so we're able to take those notes and immediately apply it to a solution. We're immediately able to pivot. And I know you're talking about challenges, but I think that this is one of the biggest things that I'm proud of. And uh, I think it uh, builds a lot of po positive mindset in my head that, that we're able to do this. That's a a lot of good information, a lot of like good points on the startup journey and how um, these these challenges will arise along the way. Um, from that, do you all have any mentors or role models who have really inspired you while you've been building your business? Yeah. So first of all, huge props to um, Rachel and Tom from the Riot team amazing mentors that have um, guided a lot of our analytical journey, especially after joining Riot, we've seen a tremendous growth and um, especially our conversion ratios, they've improved by a lot. So huge props to um, the mentors at Riot. They've also connected us with other mentors and so on. Um, historically, I think my relationship with Dr. Peter Murray Rust um, as sort of being his student and him being my mentor has really made me passionate about the field of research in general, not necessarily research in one particular space, but research as a field in itself. How do we look at it and how do we optimize it? Um, I think that's been one of the biggest factors that has drove me at least to create answer to this. Um, layering on top of this, both of my parents being scientists, they've been nothing but the pure support. Um, a good advantage that this does bring is any change that I make, they're the immediate users. Um, they, they're very, very qualified users for my app and, and sort of having their opinions and they try to be as unbiased as possible, but having their opinions right there that I can access with a phone call and just interview them essentially at every stage of a change that I'm making and ask them, well, you know, what, what is the problem in this part of the entire research process? How do you, how do you tackle it? How, how do you want to tackle it? Just having that access is, is great as well. So yeah, the, the, my parents being scientists, my relationship with Dr. Peter Mary Rust and, the amazing mentors that the right community has introduced to us has been nothing but amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I really like that. I'd say I have two types of mentors, one emotional, one uh, knowledgeable. The emotional uh, mentor that I've grown up with my entire life would definitely be my brother. Um, he's always been a role model. He's four years older than me. And I originally come from Northern Ireland. And he was the first person in our town and then also the first person in our high school to make a leap to another country. And also just throughout life, he's, he's always been very innovative. He's always pushed what could be done or what we're told could be done and, and uh, pushed beyond that. So for me, he's been a massive inspiration as he showed me that life isn't just in one place. You, you can really make life if you, if you really push at it and you, you don't stick to a fixed mindset and that you're open about things. So... For me, that's made me take any opportunity that comes my way. It makes me want to learn every day. I, I'm I'm a I'm stuck to learning for my entire life. And then on the more knowledgeable uh, mentors, of course, there's Alex Kamara, who I'm very fortunate that he took me on uh, when I was 16. Uh, and then Emily George, who I met about a year ago, she's been my sales mentor for the last year. We have bi-weekly meetings where she looks at all my sales approaches 
And she doesn't just tell me, oh yeah, no, this is great. She focuses more on uh, constructive feedback and tells me, hey, you should be doing this. Have you ever considered uh, trying saying it this way? Or have you ever experimented with di different types of marketing? So she's been great in that regard. I've had a few of her mentors uh, throughout my life. I would say the biggest mentor right now, and I hope Ayush looks at me the same way, would certainly be Ayush because every single day, um, he's given me new, new knowledge on a whole different realm that I've never considered. I mean, I come in, I don't know too much about product. I don't know too much, but even entrepreneurship before I started this entire journey. And Ayush has really mentored me on his previous knowledge about entrepreneurship, how you should do customer discovery, how you should go about doing a product, how do you do a sanity test, and also how a product is developed. So he's took me through the code of answer this, really, really got inside my brain of, okay, this is what the product is doing. This is the problem we're solving. Uh, this is actually how people will react once they get the solution. And I hope that, uh, hopefully uh, Ayush has learned a few sales skills or a few marketing skills uh, over the last year we've worked together as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, can't can't say it enough, but Ryan has taught me sales. Um, and sales is the biggest aspect of being a founder, at least that's what I believe. So I think it's been a very, very, very huge synergetic relationship between us. Certainly. Someone's really uh, working his job security in this. <laughs> <laughs> um well, so what advice would you all give to aspiring entrepreneurs and future startup founders based on your own experiences thus far? Yeah, um, I think Ryan and I would both agree on this. We've talked about this um, a lot of times because it's the same advice that we've given ourselves, especially even before starting on to this. We had a couple of, you know, a couple of small successes, a couple of small failures. But the biggest thing was just start. Um, and that really, really resonates with both of us. If you don't start, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and starting will probably teach you more than books and, and knowledge will ever will. So the biggest advice that we have for anyone who's um, looking after a problem is start. The second one, as you do start, is being really passionate about a problem, not an idea. That's one thing that we had to learn through a lot of trials and errors. Um, and I wish someone was there to tell me this before. But really don't marry yourself to an idea because an idea might fail. But if you look at the world and if you look at the problems in the world and you dedicate yourself and your life to basically saying, well, this is a problem that I really want to fix or this is the way I want the world to change and change what it's doing, then that really becomes a catalyst for innovation. Ideas will change constantly as you're solving that problem. Some might be better than others. But as long as you're working towards a problem, everything that you do will bring you closer to the ideal solution fit. So it's just a combination of making sure that your incentives are aligned, making sure that you're worried about a problem, not an idea. But then all through this process, just starting, everything that you need to know will probably be um, educated to you as you go down this process. Um, so yeah, I think the biggest thing would just be starting, but having clear goals and incentives in mind and and knowing like why you're doing this. I think that's a big thing as well. Just being very aware of why you want to get into entrepreneurship because it's not a life for everyone, but it's certainly a life that everyone should try. And at least if you're really passionate about solving a problem, it will give you an avenue for doing so. Yeah, I would fully agree with that. Um, I just want to reiterate uh, to start especially, I mean, we're young. I have not have enough life experience to know what it's like when you're old and you're just starting. But with my conversations with older folks, um, a lot of them do say that they wish they started young. And we talk to a lot of people, they have great ideas. And I really wish that everyone would at least just start, even if it's not gonna work out. The worst thing that can happen is that you're gonna learn a lot of new things. In the last six months, I can fully say that I've learned more than I ever have in my entire life. It's it's really a journey and it's it's an experience of life that I think everyone should at least try and give it a go. What at one stage if they see a problem that they're passionate about and see a market that they they want to help out. Apart from that, I would say being stuck in local minimus is a big factor and a big problem when it comes to startups. Even for my marketing, um that that stage when I was initially marketing through Instagram and doing what I was used to doing, answer this plateau plateaued and actually decreased in active users 
which at the very worst, a startup or an SMMA um, app should not decrease in active users at all. At the very worst, it should just stay consistent or at the same. And so I used rightfully pointed this out to me. He was like, what, why is this decreasing? And I, 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 um, I sort of stuck in my own head and I was thinking, well, I think if I just work a little bit harder, then maybe the numbers will start to go up. But that's not how it should work. You should be able to adapt and trying to see a way out of the local minima. So for me, that was uh, publishing to research gear and going into groups, contacting professors. But if you don't recognize, first of all, that you're in a local minima, then you're not gonna be able to find a solution to get out of that local minima. So I think that's definitely a sign of caution for um, entrepreneurs to look out for. That's really some really great advice from both of you. Um... That's all the questions that we have. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Really appreciate that. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Yeah, you too. You so much.